Hi there, hello. Um, today I am doing a very different live to normal and this is going to be more of a walking you through a design process. So um, what I find is that um, a lot of clients come to me and they have looked at what is possible in permitted development so they they know for example um, maybe they have a semi-detached house and they know they can within permitted development they can extend for three meters back into their garden and so they come to me and they say well we want an extension that goes all the way across the back of the house and goes back for three meters and unfortunately that's not um necessarily going to give them the best result and a house that really works for them so what i actually do is i give my clients a lot of homework to do and to prepare for a home design workshop and in the workshop then i will explore and um, for my clients different ways that we can achieve what they really need from their home so um, this week I went down to Surrey and did a workshop down there and um, my clients were brilliant. They did lots and lots of homework and they did all of the assessments that I asked them to do. And so when we met, they had a lot of information to tell me about and they gave me a really fantastic insight into what they really, really needed. And that was really helpful for me because that means that I was then able to design um, something that is going to actually give them what they want. Now, they're actually in the process of buying their property. They haven't bought it yet. So um, maybe if they, if they don't like what is possible with this house, they would then um, be able to pull out of buying this house if they decide to do that. Um, but this house certainly has got potential. So although at first it's quite a complicated um, project in terms of what's possible, um, there's certainly potential there to do something. So it was my challenge this week to figure out what was going to be possible within the site and um, to meet what they really needed. Now, there are some compromises that is going, are going to need to be made to meet their requirements. And I'm going to briefly go through um, what, what I picked up from them in terms of what they wanted. And then I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully this is going to work, I'm going to show you how I've tackled this design. And, and I'll also work through a third option here with you so you can see, I'll talk you through it as I do it. So, um, the first thing was that my clients are um, a, a young family, uh, two adults, two children, and they have family who come to visit. So they need um, enough, common, enough sleeping space for all of them. Their two children previously were sharing a bedroom, but um, they really want their own bedroom. So um, that's quite a challenge in the property that they're looking at is a three bedroom house. And um, none of those bedrooms are particularly large. So, um, there, there isn't any currently any space for there to be a fourth um, guest bedroom. And even the, the children's bedrooms are OK, but the master bedroom, the largest bedroom is really a little bit on the small side and not really going to give them the type of space that they really want as a couple. So that was the first challenge was to get give them the space as, as a family to sleep. And then the, the next challenge was from the entertainment and, um, and home sort of lifestyle kind of after, after work and um, relaxation kind of thing. So, so the kitchen was, is a big thing. They, they're a family that loves to cook. They love to cook from scratch. They prepare every meal using fresh ingredients. So having a kitchen that's big enough, that has enough preparation worktop, you know, storage space to do all of that was really important for them. And they love to entertain. They love to have 
um, friends and family around and to to have meals so they would sit around the table when they can and eat together but they will also uh, regularly um, host um, cook entertain themselves for themselves and another fr family another friend so so they're looking to see up to eight people quite regularly and then up to 12 people um at times when they've got family and so on visiting so that's that needs quite a lot of space to be able to see up to 12 reasonably comfortably and eight, and eight definitely comfortably um, and then the other thing was uh, the television. We had a really long conversation about television. Television use is uh, quite a personal thing, you know, whether you like to watch television or not, whether you're watching um, a film, you like having a film night, and then when you, how do you enjoy that? Is that as a family with children as well, or is that as a couple? Maybe you want to have just a glass of wine, a roaring fire in the winter, and you're, you're watching a movie together. Um, so these are different styles of, of, of watching television. Maybe you, you know, you come back and you just relax in front of the television, don't do very much. Um, maybe you want to eat in front of the television. There are loads of different ways that you, that people um, ha have a television in their lives. And the thing is that designing around a television can be quite difficult, especially if you don't want actually that television to, to really have a huge feature in your life. And that was certainly um, something that we, we talked about a lot with this client, were to have a television, how to use it, and, um, and what impact that television would have on other spaces. Because a really important thing for this family was their children. And you know, I'd say for most parents, almost every parent, their children are super important people in their lives and they want the, their children to have space where they can be creative, get messy and not have to, not be a, feeling stressed about the mess that this is that children cause because they do, they create, they have a lot of stuff and it gets everywhere and they didn't want to have to be constantly worrying about tidying that up and moving it out of the way so that they could have adult space after children's bedtime or um, to be able to entertain and make the house look um, presentable when people came around. So they wanted to have space where the children could um, let loose, hang out, and um, they don't have to feel too precious about that space. So there were quite a lot of pressures on this house. So now I'm going to show you, talk you through what the layout of this house and um, if I can, I'm going to figure out how to move this around and I hope you're going to be able to see this okay. So, um, is that going to work? Yes. Now. Right, so I'll tighten this up. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. This is the ground floor of the property. So this was the main entrance. Um, come in here, little tiny porch, and into a very, very generous hall, and then a dog leg staircase. This is the kitchen at the back, leading out into the garden, and this is quite a large um, living room with an open fireplace and double doors out into the garden. There is a window to the front, which I haven't sketched. There's also quite a lot of generous space all around um, all around the sides and the front and actually not um, not a hugely deep garden so about the same width all around is is available to sort of move into when you're looking at an extension so that's the ground floor so obviously here the kitchen is too small for them um, this this hall is huge uh, it's very important for they do have a lot of coats and, and shoes and things they want to be able to um, come into the house and, and pop things down and, and have them out of the way but this is an absolutely enormous space to do that and um, probably too too much of a too big a space really for it and then just the one living room um, and no connection between um, these spaces and I suppose this living room it is quite long, so you could say, or well, part of it, you could be, have it as a dining space and part of it as a sitting space, but then the fireplace is central to it. 
Um, it, it's quite a tight space and um, certainly a lot of wasted space that doesn't really work for them. Um, doesn't have a separate space for the kids to hang out. It doesn't have a more defined space for television and a separate space for sort of sitting and chatting. So really it's a bit limited on space. And then this is the first floor. So once you come up the staircase, then there's quite a generous bathroom uh, and then two smaller um, single rooms really. This one, although it looks about the same size as that, the roof starts to slope down. So um, it does feel a little bit smaller, even if it's not that much smaller. And then this is the largest one. But um, if I draw on here a bed so that you can then you can see what we're looking at, a double bed. Takes, it takes up quite a lot of the space in the room. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Wrong stencil. So here, here's a double bed, and as you can see, once you've got a double bed drawn in, a couple of pillows, bedside tables, and wardrobe, chest of drawers maybe, it's really not a lot of space to move around, it's quite a tight room so it's not not a brilliant um, size really, I mean it's it's okay and I know that um, so uh, most of the work that I do is up in the northwest of England where we actually have relatively generous spaces certainly for the money um, when you start to go down into Surrey in London you're looking at much much smaller spaces um, at much higher cost so so for the south of England this seems like it's not it's not an it's a workable size but it's certainly not a generous size from a north of England perspective um, and then when you're looking at the site itself so we've got about three, just over three metres, three and a half metres to the side of the house, um, about five and a half metres to the back to a retaining wall, um, and then to the side, about five metres, and to the front um, between, between four and five metres, depending on which part of the, of the house you're looking at. So it certainly it, it steps forward. So this is a bit quite a challenge, really, to get quite a large wish list of items into this into this house um, with quite a small amount of space. So what I've done is started off looking at the upstairs and one of the simpler kind of approaches to extending this house would be to extend to the front. So extending this forwards um, because the reason that this seems like it, it there is a potential to do that is because there there is another building along the road a little bit further which which extends further forwards it's actually a really old building it's listed and this would kind of sit sit better alongside that one because this is pulling it further forwards and it would um, marry up better with the street line in relation to that building. Whereas this part of the house um, is the same building line as houses further along the adjacent to it along the road this way. So this is kind of a house that's bridging the gap between different properties. It's an it's an interesting street scene. There's not uh, one building line, so it's. There, there may be potential to persuade planners that this is acceptable. It's not always the case and certainly extending to the front can be quite a tricky thing to get permission for. But what we've looked at doing here is swapping these all around. Um, it's quite a busy, loud street to the front. And so this 
this is Im involving changing a lot of drainage and plumbing and all that sort of thing, which is relatively expensive works. So it's not necessarily um, something that you want to do all the time. You can maybe avoid it. Often people prefer to avoid it. So what I've done here is I've put the bathroom here in the front and made this bedroom much bigger. Put a larger bedroom here at the back. So we've got two quiet bedrooms, both south facing, both overlooking the rear garden. And then I've, I've switched the um, stairs around and made a much bigger bedroom to here. So we've now got three double bedrooms, two of them being a really good size, only one of them being still a kind of a bit of on the tight side, but still a reasonable size. And we've got a, a, the bathroom here at the front instead. Um, this, this, you know, is going to involve quite a lot of work to the drainage. So whether that's financially doable is another matter, but that's, that would be another thing to look at. Then with the same approach on the ground floor, what we've got is a, an extension. So this, the same amount extending forward. So this will be a two story extension and then a single story extension to the front of this part of the house. So we've got a, a, the, at the ground floor, it's a, sing, it's a straightforward line here, whereas it steps back at first floor level created a new entrance to the side um, making that what was an enormous hall into a slightly smaller hall because we swapped the um, staircase around and made this into more of a boot room using all of the space underneath the stairs for storage and then popped in a wet room um, toilet could potentially be a, a utility room you could put a, a washing machine in here and then um, put the seating, like a, a sitting room, which can be open to the dining, could be also closed off uh, if you used a pocket door here. Um, so the sitting with direct access to the garden and then putting in a side um, door here so that this seating area could have a fixed, fixed bench and uh, enough seating to comfortably seat, seat six to eight people normally but then the table could be turned around and extended to be able to seat 12. And then a really decent sized kitchen. Now, unfortunately, you're not being able to get, it's not, it's not the right sort of shape and size of room to be able to put an island unit in. But what I've put is a peninsula here, so you could have some sort of a breakfast bar here as well. Um, and there's lovely views out this way just because it's quite a noisy street, but you can overcome noise with decent windows um, and get a lot of a lot of beautiful view, sunshine in to the sides more. And because there's plenty of, of windows coming in, you could even add a roof light over here. This space would be really nice and bright. Um, and then you've got direct access going out here. Now this, this the reason that I've put the kitchen over here is partially because I've also looked at moving the bathroom over here so that means that all the plumbing and everything all the drainage it's all going to have to be renewed anyway because at the moment it's all over this side so bringing it to the front um you know it, it would all all be linked together all the drainage would, would be going out together however Although I think in some ways this is better than what they've got. They've got a much bigger kitchen space. They've got a more defined dining room and bigger space for dining. It doesn't really give them the guest bedroom that they want. Um, and it doesn't give them that kind of space where the kids can be messy and leave stuff out and have a more of a creative playroom space. So this it it's it's a good option uh, it's nicer spaces bigger bedrooms a uh, bigger kitchen and adds in some extra useful space on the ground floor but it doesn't um give them everything that they were wanting so the next thing that i've looked at is an extension to the back and so if i go this time from the ground floor first 
So looking at the ground floor, we've got, well, here we go. So this is a real, a real sketch. And what I think I'll do is I'll draw over this at the same time so you can see a little bit more of my thought process. But I've looked at having a two story extension right here. So there is a big garage that comes all the way back here, takes up quite a big chunk of their garden. And they've got a very big drive, so they've got plenty of space for parking cars in front of here. And they have got the potential to be able to turn this space in front of the house into a, in, into a drive. So um, at the moment, there's plenty of space to park two, maybe a squeeze three cars here. Um, if we put this extension here, then they would still comfortably be able to park one car here, but they could also make it possible to park a second car here instead um, and there's lots of space over here in this area where they could have um, a small outbuilding where they can look at storing bikes fixing bikes and um, other sorts of storage there's plenty of room over here to the side of the house for, for doing that so i think that that there is scope to remove the, the, the garage that's over in this area. I'm hoping you can see this right well enough. Um, let me move that around. So what I've looked at is a um, new entrance coming in here with a boot room type space, quite a large, quite a decent, generous hall, but nowhere near as big as the space that we had before. The, the space that was there before becoming that um, creative play space and adding in a window, removing the little porch that's at the front, adding in a window so you've got plenty of light and views into this space, switching the staircase around. So before you were coming up and round now we're going up this way and round so we've got cloakroom storage under the stairs from this hall and then also potentially some bench seating that could have shoe storage incorporated and you can go through that and possibly have a, a small wet room and um, toilet and, and sink so you've got that on the ground floor um, this room here it could either be open to the staircase, so it all feels like one space and that will feel a lot more open plan, or um, it could have doors on here and here, and this could also then potentially function as an occasional guest room when two guest bedrooms are needed. Coming through here then, um, I've put in some fixed seating here that could have storage incorporated, dining, so this is like a dining space that would, can be opened up to the garden, We've got a lot more garden space here, all the way along here is now garden and um, potentially a little bit of a seating area as well, soft seating. The only downside with this one is that for a kitchen, the kitchen is a little bit on the tight side. Um, it's more of a little galley kitchen really and it, is it could be possible to sort of extend a little bit further out and just make that a bit more generous. Um, but again, the kind of the real ideal for this um, couple was to have an island unit and there just isn't really enough space to have an island unit but it could have pretty generous galley kitchen um, with a lovely view into the garden so this could be made to work really really well um, and then in terms of moving around I mean there's there's a little bit of a circular motion possible you can come through this way or you can go through the kitchen so there's you know there's a lot of scope for the kids to run around and have fun doing that and then we've got seating area with the open fireplace possibly space for um, a little bit of home working in here or equally that could be in here and then this space that's underneath the stairs could also be really useful lower level level storage for the living room possibly keeping all sorts of tech sort of stuff tucked away gaming and um you know all that kind of uh, what's the word high, high te the technology sort of stuff could be going here 
possibly it could be um depends on how high this is but it's possible that this could be something where you can open it up and pull out a television and then push it back and hide it away which was something that that might be a good solution for this family so that's really where i've got to with the with the floor plan on this i'm not going to draw it out again actually i'm just going to keep it as that i hopefully that makes sense and then um so looking then at the first floor in relation to this plan we've got the staircase switched round guest bed here could possibly have some ensuite an ensuite to the guest bed at the front here i've made that whole space into one bedroom so that's the master bedroom um, again it could have an ensuite here i've made the bathroom into a longer narrow bathroom but it could be extended out the the ground floor um kitchen is actually stepped back a little bit so that is possible to extend out over that to make this bathroom a bit deeper and then we've got a sort of a play study landing with two bedrooms off it or this whole space could be a kind of a joint bedroom and using furniture solutions to kind of divide the space up so the the um the kids have got their own kind of area within this large room or it could be split with partition walls and doors and they each have their own um, bedroom with views into the garden and then they've got views out it's a beautiful view forwards as well from this landing so i think this gives them a much more of what they want with this extension now there was one other option that i was going to explore for this project and that was to look at extending over here more i'm actually not sure i haven't done that so far purely because i don't think there'd be so much scope but i thought it might be interesting to have a look at that um during this live and show you maybe what what possible what might be possible and also to give you an idea of the kind of way that i approach things so we've got to the front we've got about 4.8 meters so i'm going to mark that on here about 4.8 meters um but there's a little bit of uncertainty about ownership of about a meter of that so i'm going to just take a meter off and we're going to look at what will happen if we extend to this point and then to the side there is um 3.5 meters but in this area they're very keen on this kind of 45 degree rule light right to light and so on um so there is a house which is about there with a window around here so i think we're looking at something where we could probably extend in that kind of area um so it may be that we could look at something where we're extending out along to this kind of thing they would like to be able to go all the way around their property so if i give it a meter so this is the kind of area that we're looking at this additional space and i'm not sure that that's really going to give them what they want so much so this is where on the ground floor at the moment they've got this this kitchen back here so what we thought was we could push this staircase forward a little bit and then we get we gain extra space for the kitchen we've got a bigger kitchen um and then you've got the dining area here um if we took out this wall okay that's a that is a big structural piece of work and it's not cheap to do it but it can be done um so then we've actually got quite a decent size space um and then this this little this area becomes that bit smaller um and i think we could just look at um 
Oh, you could we could either keep this porch on as it is, and then this this becomes more of a boot room type space. It you know the hall that they've got at the moment is huge. They don't need it to be so big. And then they can have um, all the storage cupboards and so on underneath here that relate to this boot room. Um, like it's not a me, it's it's. So and then in here, if this this is open, they want they really like the openness. So if this is open and we've got this close and choice is where do we where do we come in and here and I think it actually in some ways it would be nice to have um, even something that sort of opens up quite a, quite a bit but I'm just thinking about this structure so if that was a solid wall here and then possibly could have some sort of a pocket door system so or a sliding door so that this whole thing opened um, and then at the same time keep the door in straight to the kitchen as well um, and then they've got scope to have a bigger kitchen but again it's not really a huge kitchen to have a It's not really something you could get much of a there's not enough space really to get a full island unit in there I mean it's just a bit on the narrow side you could do some you could do something like this you know to have to have like a little breakfast bar something like that um, That gives you sort of three units, say, and then here another few units. I'm just literally marking out sort of the amount of um, standard base units. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which isn't enough because I wanted to have. Um, they wanted there to be at least 16 um, units so if these were double height then then that would be fine but otherwise it doesn't really work so to get there's not a lot of scope for getting what they want in here although they could do something more push that over here and have some more something more of a seems start starts to seem pointless to put a breakfast bar in here they really like the idea of a breakfast bar but there's not really um enough it's just not enough scope Bre breakfast bars and islands they kind of need quite a large room to be able to achieve that so i just don't think we've got enough space to be able to do it to do it really well but we could put in you know big double doors in here and have have this as a, a sort of um, a peninsula unit and then so if we forgot about that bit and have the whole this space working more like that with um, access directly out into the garden and here there's access out into the garden directly as well and um, we could put they're really keen on the idea of some some storage benches so that could go in there quite easily with the dining table and um, something along those lines and then and then that could easily be extended for you know extra people to seat if if you had a, a larger group of people coming to eat um they really love their open fireplace if we extended it something like this there would potentially be scope to do um, something that was like dual sided so you can see all the way through it and then they could have kind of a nice um, like a cozy kind of place to sit with window out to the garden 
um, a little little cosy seating area um, just in front of this maybe like a couple a little soft you know a little sitting area possibly um, that could be again another route directly out they really like this indoor outdoor kind of approach to living so you could go in and out very easily um, and then um, in terms of somewhere to watch television so this could be quite a good place to have um, a, te a television sort of space with a large um, corner sofa say and some some windows to the front here and then this area here could be a bit more of a, a space with a, a desk and um, space with storage for kids toys um, and this could be an area where if the kids toys are a little bit out you know it could be partially separated by again some some sort of um, storage system some shelves something that maybe was a bit du double sided could have more of a display on this side and could be more for storing toys and things from this side um, so this it's kind of semi split but at the same time it's open um, that starts to give us more of the kind of things that they're looking for so we've got the boot room here the stair here with cloak storage underneath we've got a kitchen here not um, not a not the kitchen with the island unit but still a bigger kitchen than what's there already and um, dining and um, seating a TV and seating and then play space so this kind of starts to give a lot of what they were wanting it doesn't give you a space so much downstairs where you could split it off but there may be scope to do something along here even if, if that was something like um curtains or something and then this could become a little bit more like a little bit of a guest bed space we don't have a downstairs toilet with a shower room although it would be possible possibly to put something in here um that might be an option and if we got rid of this and made this you know have a window in here as well as the door so you've got more light in there then that would feel better than coming in this tiny little space and then in that would be an option so possibly wc shower in there so that's the ground floor and if we're looking at first floor Um, so we're looking at extending on the first floor so that we've got this space here to the side. Now whether we'd be able to do this to the second floor or not I don't know but we can have a little look at what kind of impact that would have. So we've got here is the current bathroom, there's a little storage room here. Um, this is one bedroom and another bedroom and then there we're looking at bringing this staircase down a bit so this bedroom gets a bit smaller and this is the stair here coming up so um, what we could do possibly is um we could make, we could split this all up quite differently so if we if we were to put a toilet and shower room down there then this space here could become the bathroom because we're already doing work to add in um drainage and so on so we could tie all that together and in that case then this here could become a much bigger bedroom and we could bring this forwards so that we've got another bedroom here that's this size with a door in there we've got a door in here we've got a door in there and then this room 
could become the whole the whole of that like this with scope for this to be then either a dressing room off this room or could be um, another a little ensuite for this room so that's that's kind of how I'd approach this sort of thing so that would give them though only three bedrooms but those three bedrooms are much bigger than the bedrooms that they've currently got and um, that's not a really very clear drawing so I'll just sort of do that again and that. So we would have one large bedroom there, one large bedroom here, and then bathroom down here, stairs. And another bedroom in here. I mean, it does this. This doesn't give them this whole layout. It only still gives them three bedrooms with a possible ensuite or wardrobe and a bathroom. Because what I'm trying to do all the time is make this sort of circulation space as small as possible. So, you know, you want light coming in here so you've got a nice bright hall. Um, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on your circulation space. You want it to feel large by having views out and plenty of natural light. But you don't want it to actually take up a lot of valuable space which could be better used as part of a room. So that would tend to be my approach. Um, another way you could work it is you could you could make that bigger, so that then you could start to say, well, we've got we could have that as a bedroom, and we could have that as a bedroom. Not really. You'd have that as a bathroom, an internal bathroom, and then you could have this is a bedroom with this sort of perhaps wardrobe kind of walk through wardrobe type space to get through to a bedroom and then this could be a bedroom instead a smaller bedroom so you'd, then you would have one two three four bedrooms with a bathroom in here so that that would be another way to do it where you'd have your doors in say something more like that so then this, you know, you do double the, the size of your circulation space, um, but you get an extra bedroom by doing that. Um, but it is quite, it's quite a small bedroom that you get. So, you know, it's only, it's only big enough for a single bed. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to put a double bed in it. Well, you could put a double bed in it. But you wouldn't be able to put anything else in there. So this would this would be a double bed. Um, like this. And as you can see, there's not really a lot of space for anything other than the bed in there. So that might be okay if it was more of a study and a and a you know very rarely used guest bedroom. But I don't think that would really be that satisfactory for this family because um, when their guests come to stay, they stay for a few weeks. So that's that's really a bit on the small side. So, um, you know, but that that would be an option. That's another, you know, in terms of this is an area that they could potentially extend into and double as a double story extension. And that's that is the kind of those sort of layouts. That's the sort of thing, that the extra space that you're looking at getting. Where is it? 
lost it now. Okay, so on the ground floor, you know, you're getting a bigger kitchen, you're getting a large, really large open plan or broken plan space um, with a lot of the elements that, that my clients were looking for, not everything, but, but some of them. And then in this area, um, you know, potentially we could get a fourth bedroom. A lot of people don't like internal bathrooms, completely internal bathrooms, although this is at the top of the house. You could add in a roof light or a sun pipe or something so you've got some natural light and possibly natural vent ventilation that way as well but this um, bedroom is really quite small and as a whole i would say that this option is not really as satisfactory which is one of the reasons that i didn't really um i, I felt that it wasn't going to be the best option so i i didn't explore it first but it's always worth having a look and, and you might discover that you were wrong um, I'm always happy to find out that I'm wrong so so this is this is a kind of example of how it is to work through so I'm gonna just pop you up here now um, here right so I hope that that has been interesting a bit of a, a different sort of very different way that I've been doing these um, videos. I'd be really interested to know what you think about that and um, if that's helped you in any way, if that's given you any um, ideas for your own house and um, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me um, about any of that sort of thing. What, why did I think about doing it in this way? Why you know, have, did I not, did I think about something? Maybe I, there's something I should have thought about and you, you can tell me that I've missed something out. Um, you tend to, because you're dealing with a three dimensional thing, so you do need to look at all of the different floors that you're working with at once when you're looking at a plan. Um, and you need to think about the way that the sun shines, the way that you access things. There's quite a lot of different things that's going on. You know as you're thinking things through so maybe maybe I haven't explained everything that I've been thinking so if that you have any particular questions about why I suggested one thing over another please do pop them in the comments below I would love to you know know what you think and I would love to know what you struggle to understand so that I can um, be get better at being more clear about things and help help people better to know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be, it, it, it's not a mystery. None of this is a mystery. Um, it's just, um, you know, as, as an architect, you learn to think things through in a certain way and you learn to work things through in a certain way. So, and it's not always that easy. Once you've trained in that for so many years, and you've been practicing it for so many years and a lot of this design work that I've just shown you a lot of that is usually done kind of on your own <laughs> not in a dark room uh, on your own um, sometimes with a glass of wine and not not always done um, as a group activity and I do like to do this alongside my clients so that whilst I'm doing it I get immediate feedback about whether this they feel that this is the right thing for them or not because if it's clearly not the right thing then I just drop it and don't pursue that any further and look at an alternative um, option instead so we're not wasting time sort of exploring options that are not going to be satisfactory um, but yeah this kind of stuff is not really often done in a way that lots of people can see it it's a not a, not a secret but it's just not something that a lot of architects do in the open um, so I'd love to know what you think about that what you know do you think would you like to see more of this kind of thing me explaining you know exploring different options there in life so that you can see get some glimpse into what I'm thinking and why I'm doing it um, and if you have any questions about any of that please do put, put them below. So that's it for now and I will look forward to seeing you next Friday. Goodbye!